We're in this studio in Montreux, and David Bowie lives nearby. I think we went out for a meal or some drinks or something, and then landed up back in the studio. This is a match, obviously. It was created by accident when John Walker scraped a stick covered in chemicals across his hearth. Right place, right time. And just like the humble match, Queen's Under Pressure was born out of pure serendipity. So let's find out how all those puzzle pieces fell together and how one of the greatest pop songs of all time was produced. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. 1981, Mountain Studios, Montreux, Switzerland. Queen were recording their 10th studio album, Hot Space. By complete coincidence, David Bowie was also recording in Mountain Studios around the same time. He was recording tracks for the upcoming film, Cat People. Now of course, when global superstars are in the same vicinity, they tend to want to meet up. And that's exactly what David Bowie and Queen did. Bowie decided to pop by while Queen were in session, and they started jamming. First, they would play other people's songs just for fun. But eventually, according to Roger Taylor, Bowie suggested, this is stupid, why don't we just write one? What they created became a piece of pop history, driven by John Deacon's unforgettable infectious bass line. Which, by the way, he totally forgot. Yeah, he discovered this incredible bass line, played it over and over again in the studio, and then him and the band and David Bowie all went for pizza. By the time they got back, he had completely forgotten how to play it. Luckily for him and the world of music, Roger Taylor remembered how it went. And the track was back on track. Oh, and by the way, John Deacon forgetting the bass line had absolutely nothing to do with the heaps of recreational substances that David Bowie brought along to the studios. Nothing at all. So, with Deacon's bass line driving the song, the rest of the backing track was arranged, and then came time for laying down the vocals. Bowie suggested that himself and Freddie should go in blind and sing off the top of their heads what they think the song should sound like, and that they shouldn't be able to hear what the other person was singing. As Brian May said, Everybody just goes in there with no idea, no notes, and sings the first thing that comes into their head over the backing track. So we all did. And then we compiled all the bits and pieces, and that's what Under Pressure was based on. All those random thoughts. Again, probably nothing to do with the heaps of recreational substances that David Bowie brought along to the studios. And this resulted in that iconic dynamic between Freddie Mercury and David Bowie that you hear on the track. The two of them almost duelling, going head to head. Two vocal powerhouses trying to outdo each other, resulting in, well, the performance you hear on the track. That unique way of recording also explains all the scats and improvisations that you hear throughout the song. Bowie did a lot more than simply provide vocals for the track. According to Brian May and John Deacon, Bowie pretty much overtook the entire creative process. He reportedly instructed Deacon on how to play the bass, discouraged May from having any input at all, and even had the song's title changed. It was originally to be titled People on the Streets, but David Bowie's persuasiveness got the better of them. He even demanded to stay around during the mixing and mastering of the track. Jeez, Bowie, back off. Despite all that though, the finished product was, of course, a masterpiece. It became Queen's second number one since Bohemian Rhapsody and Bowie's third. It was a top 10 song in more than 10 countries around the world and is largely considered one of the greatest and poignant pop songs of all time. Sadly, Bowie and Mercury never got the chance to perform the song live together. Despite them being in the same place for Band-Aid 1985, David Bowie was right after Queen as well. They reportedly couldn't find any time to rehearse a live performance with their busy schedules of recording and touring. In fact, they were so busy they didn't even have the time to shoot a proper music video together. Instead, it's a mix of documentary footage and silent cinema footage from the 1920s. Bowie did perform the song at Freddie Mercury's tribute concert in 1992 though, with Annie Lennox singing Mercury's part. Is Under Pressure the greatest musical collaboration of all time? Or do you think another song takes that title? Let me know in the comments below. And to hear about the song that David Bowie absolutely loathed, you can click here. And I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. Okay, bye-bye now. <laughs>